Hello students, I'm Imgong Tan Lapungan, anthropologist from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we will be discussing on the module Comparative Primate Osteology from the paper Human Origin and Evolution. Well, the learning objectives of the module are to know about the comparative anatomy of the primates, that is skull, facial, bone, cranium, vault, etc to make a comparison of the different order or suborders that is prosimians, anthropoids, stripsirhini, tarsiform, anthropoids, blatyrhine, catarine and hominoid skeleton to present a brief view of primate dentition. Firstly, let us discuss briefly about the osteology of primates. The comparative osteology of primates has interested researchers for centuries. Extant primates are characterized along with osteology also by various myological synapomorphies which are shared derived features including the presence of certain muscles in the hand that increase the dexterity and the fact that a specific arm muscle does not insert onto one of the forearm bones. The primate skull is a three-dimensional, rather spheroid structure and is the most complex organization of bones in the skeleton. The size and proportions distinguishing the primate skull from other mammalian skulls illustrate series of morphological modifications associated with an arboreal mode of life. This includes an increase in visual acuity with large and more frontally oriented orbits which are surrounded by a bony ring, a reduction in smell usually accompanied by reduction of the nasal region, a gradual enlargement of the brain with commensurate increase in the neurocranium that is the brain case. A development of various degree of upright trunk positions which changes the position of the foramen magnum from facing backwards to a more forward position downwards and increased use of the forelimbs for prehension and procuring food resulting in a general reduction of jaws and de teeth. Now let us see the bone of the face. An important feature of the primate face is its ankle with the basic cranial axis of the skull. Typically, the mammalian face lies in front of the cranium, forming only a slight ankle with the cranial base. The ankle becomes more acute in primates, especially in the anthropoids, where the face is positioned beneath the cranium rather than in front of it. The changes in the craniofacial relations are correlated with the greater cerebral development of primates and the alteration in the plane of the foramen magnum is associated with the reduction of the face as well as with the orticrate or more erect posture of the trunk. Along with changes and commensurate reduction of the olfactory areas there has been a recession of the snout, although there is a considerable variation in the muzzle development among living primates and for various reasons. The frontal bone is low and sloping in many primates but has become more vertical, conforming to the large frontal loops of the brain during the later stages of the primate evolution. The frontal bone develops as paired bones in all the primates and remains separated by a midline, such as in many prosimians. The maxilla or upper jaw containing the upper teeth is composed of two paired bones in non-human primates, the premaxilla and maxilla. Only the upper incisor teeth develop and occupy the premaxilla. The premaxilla is quite variable in size, extending upward for various distances between the nasal and the maxillary bones. It is reduced in modern lemurs and apparently the small size of the premaxilla is correlated with their diminutive incisors which in lepi lemur are completely absent. Now let us discuss about the bones of the orbit. 
Here, this figure illustrates the difference in the orbital bones in anthropoid and prosimian. The baled lacrimal bones and lacrimal canals are positioned outside the orbits in lemuriforms and lorisiforms, but are located within the orbits in the anthropoidae, though occasionally the lacrimal canal may be found on the orbital margin or slightly outside the orbit in some anthropoid genera. A strut or ledge of bone has developed in primates to connect the frontal bone to the zygomatic bone. It is known as the bose orbital bar. The bose orbital bar is presented in all living primates as well as in some other mammals. Prosimians possess only the bony bar. In higher primates, the back wall of the orbit has an additional bony partition separating it from the temporal fossa. Now let us discuss about the cranial vault. The bones of the cranium vault are frontal, the two parietals, the ethmoid, the two temporals, the occipital, and the sphenoid bone united by the fibrous sutures. During infancy and early adolescence, these sutures allow growth of the brain, face, and skull. In many groups of primates, usually in males, a sagittal crest results when temporal lines converge along the cranial vault for the attachment of the temporal muscles. Large natural crest, which forms a veritable bone leech, is found in the male orangutan. Grooves, speeds, and foramina result from blood vessels, nerves, and tendons passing on or through the bones as it develops. Now let us discuss about the basilar view of the skull. The most obvious feature from the basal view of the skull is the large hole through the occipital bone, the foramen magnum, through which the spinal cord passes to become the brain inside the cranium. There has been a trend toward more forward and downward placement of the foramen magnum in anthropoids. On either side of the foramen magnum are the occipital condyles, which fit into a pair of depressions on the first cervical vertebra. This important connection between the skull and the spine permits front-to-back motion of the skull. In prosimians and most platyrrhine, the pulla is inflated into a relatively large elongated structure lying just lateral and anterior to the occipital condyles, while in catarrhines, the petrosal is not inflated as a pulla. The external auditory meters is formed from the ectotymphanic bone in primates. This feature may be expressed as a ring lying within the bulla or attached to the wall of the bulla. In darcyrus and catarrhines, the tympanic annulus remains in contact with the temporal bone but is elongated into the external auditory meters. This type of external auditory meters present in a specimen is one of the easiest and clearest ways of distinguishing between old world monkey and new world monkey skull. This figure illustrates the structure of the bony external meters in primates. Now let us see paranasal sinuses. Several bones of the skull, the maxillary, frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, vomer, temporal and palatine may develop cavities or sinuses within the tissue between the two surfaces of the bone as the major. This process is known as pneumatization, which is initiated by the outgrowth of the mucous membrane of the nasal cavity and middle ear cavity. The mucous sacs wander into adjacent bones, slowly causing bone absorption, which may continue throughout life. The pneumatic cells of the middle ear normally invade the mastoid process of the temporal bone. These bony sinuses are differentially present among primates and are all subject to considerable variation in form and size. Now, this figure illustrates the skull differences between prosimians and anthropoids. Now, let us discuss about prosimians and anthropoids. The first major branch of the order primates is divided into 
two suborders, Prosimi and Anthropoidae. This distinction is met on a number of anatomical and behavioral features. However, the most obvious are found in the skull. There is a greater degree of midline fusion of the skull bones in anthropoids. Both the mandible and the frontal bone are a single bone in anthropoids and separate left and right bones in prosimians. The joint between the left and the right frontal bones is a standard skull suture and immobile, but the joint between the left and right mandibles is a fibrous joint that will allow a limited amount of movement. It is likely that this will affect the chewing mechanics of prosimians. Now let us discuss about the Strepsirene skeleton. This group ranges in size from the smallest as 30 gram, while the largest of living lemurs is not particularly impressive in size relative to hominoids and some monkeys, all of the recently extinct lemurs were larger than their surviving relatives. The largest of this, that is, the archaeoentries, may have been nearly 200 kg, larger than most of the living hominoids. The living Strepsirene mostly have more typical body forms that can generally be divided into four categories. Number one, we have the relatively small slow bodies, for example, those of the slow lorries, Nycticippus, and dwarf lemurs, Cherocalius, that may represent the body plan of the most primitive ancestral primate. Number two, we have the small bodies built for quick movement, for example, the bush babies, calico and mouse lemurs, microsippus. Thirdly, we have the arboreal quadrupeds, for example, ring-tail lemurs, lemur and the true lemurs, that is the ewe lemur. What most may think of as a typical lemur form. Fourthly, we have the vertical clinging and leaping lemurs. For example, the intri, intri and cephacus propiticus. Almost all of the living Strepsirene fall more or less within one of these categories with one amazing exception, that is the IAIA, which is also known as the Taupendonia. Exceptions aside, Strepsirenes have a fairly typical primate skeleton that is substantial clavicles and opposable powerful big toes. All have fairly large eyes surrounded by post or bidal bars, bony struts connecting the frontal bone to the zygomatic arc to either support or protect the relatively convergent eyes. Most Ripsarhynes have long tails and typical primate molars and premolars although relatively primitive. Most although or like most also have tooth combs, a reorganization of the lower anterior tendition that is incisors and canines in which these teeth are long and thin and aligned as an apparatus which is used for grooming. They also have a grooming or toilet claw, a long sharp claw generally found on the second door. Now let us discuss about the Darciform skeleton. The small number of species of this group that is found in the islands of the Southeast Asia is unique among primates in several features. For one thing, they are strictly carnivorous, feeding exclusively on insects and small vertebrates that they capture through fast visual predation. This feeding strategy has a strong effect on their bony anatomy. The Darcyrus have very long ankle bones, giving them enormous leverage for leaping. They also have very sharp teeth for consuming soft animals. The most distinctive osteological features of the Darcyrus are their orbits and huge eyes. Aside from their size, the orbits of Darcyrus are notable because they are much more enclosed in the back than those of the Strepsirenes. 
There is a debate over whether the spony septum represents a true post orbital wall, a defining feature separating Strepsirhinus from monkeys and hominoids, or whether this is an example of convergence, but suffice it to say, this is one piece of anatomy that seems to affirm the place of this unique genus somewhere as an offshoot between Strepsirhinus and anthropoids. Now let us discuss about the anthropoid skeleton. In addition to the full post-orbital wall, Unlike Strepsirhinus, anthropoids generally have fused frontal bones. Darsiers have rapidity in the fusion of their frontal and fused mandibular symphysis that is a single unpaired lower jaw, while Strepsirhinus and Darsiers have right and left mandibles that they can move with varying degrees depending on genus independently. Anthropoids also differ from Brosimians in the position of generally larger brains, lack of claws, with the exception of one South American monkey group, generally broad incisors and marked sexual dimorphism in most species, most commonly seen as larger canines in males than in females. Now let us discuss about the Blatterine skeleton. Osteologically, New World monkeys can be distinguished from other anthropoids in the retention of three premolars in each quadrant of the jaw, that is, 12 totals while catarines have only 8. There are also substantial, though fairly technical, details that define this group in terms of the morphology if the bones of their ear region and specific bones of the brain case come in contact with each other. Now let us see the Catarine skeleton. Skeletally, Catarines have more reduced tendition than the other primates, having lost one of the premolars. Members of this sclate can be distinguished from other primates in details of the ear region, but beyond this, there are not many defining osteological features of the group. These are generally the largest primates with the smallest extent monkey. The Delipoin, which is also known as Myobiticus, at approximately 1 kg, which is fairly large compared to many of the smallest Strepsirhines and Platyrhines, and the largest living members of the Catarhini, that is the Corillas, are the clearly the largest living taxon in the order at up to approximately 230 kg in the wild. One extinct catarine, the hominoid Gigantopithecus, was the largest primate to ever live at approximately 300 kg. Now let us discuss about the hominoid skeleton. One obvious feature often used to define this group is the lack of an external tail. While some other catarines have also lost their tails, for example, the Barbary macaque, Macaga sylvanus is often called the Barbary ape because this species has no tail. None of the hominoids have external tails nor did any of their common ancestors. In general, hominoids have a more articulate or upright posture. The adaptations found in humans can generally be broken into two major categories. Number one, Changes related to our bipedal locomotion, for example, changes in our spines, hips, ankles, knees, etc. Number two, changes related to advances in our cognition, not only our large brain cases, but also modifications to our teeth and hands in response to technological advances in feeding and tool use. Now, this figure illustrates the differences in primate tendition. Now let us discuss about primate tendition. All primates have diphoidonty, meaning they have two sets of teeth. The first set of teeth, often termed baby or deciduous teeth, 
appear early in infant development and then are replaced by a full set of adult teeth. Teeth are found in the maxilla, the upper part of the upper jaw from which the teeth grow and the mandible that is the lower jaw. Each tooth can be divided into the following three parts that is crown, neck and root. The tooth crown is covered by a hard substance called as the enamel and has varying numbers and kinds of cups, the pointed or rounded biting surface of the tooth. The crown is supported by dentine, which is softer than the enamel. The bulb cavity underlies dentine and forms the central chamber of the tooth. Bulb comprises soft tissue, blood vessels and nerves that provide sensitivity to heat and cold. Now, all primates are characterized by hydrodonty, meaning they have different kinds of teeth. Specifically, most primates have the following four kinds of teeth from front to back, that is incisors, canines, premolars and molars. This teeth can be categorized into two parts, anterior dentition, which includes the incisors and the canines, and posterior dentition, which includes the premolars and the molars. Now, value anthropologists use the dental formula to describe the number of each kind of tooth in one half of the maxilla and mandible of a species. Now, this figure illustrates the comparative osteology of hands of primates. Now let us further discuss about the hands of the primates. Primate hands represents one of the original and fundamental adaptations of primates. Hands are grasping structures and are generally palm grade in their orientation to a support. Some primates use digiti grade, knuckle walking, suspensory grabs, or fist walking hand postures. Crisping hands must flex all five digits at the metacarpal, phalangeal, and interphalangeal joints while simultaneously opposing the first digit or the thumb. Rotation of the hand, pronation or internal rotation aligns the palm with the support, usually a branch. Hand rotation, either pronation or supination, an external rotation occurs primarily at the elbow joint between the radial head and capitulum with little mobility at the wrist joints. Now, wrist joints primarily function to flex and extend the hand. Another distinctive wrist feature in primates is where the wrist bones conduct the ulna. The styloid process at the distal end of the ulna is long and contacts the triquetrum and the bisiform wrist bones in most primates. In apes, the styloid process is reduced in land and does not contact these two wrist bones. Now, a bed or fibrocartilaginous meniscus is located between the ulnar styloid and the triquetrum in apes, preventing the articulation between these Bones. Now, the reduction of the styloid process results in greater abduction at the wrist in the abs. Now, this figure illustrates the comparative pelvis of the chimpanzee and humans. The most significant changes to the pelvis in humans compared to other apes are in the ilium, that is, the top portion of the innominate bone, in humans is shorter and broader curves around the trunk, whereas in apes it is flat against the back of the trunk. Greater sciatic notch is very wide in apes, that is a function of their long tall ilium. Anterior inferior iliac spine is prominent in the hominin pelvis, absent or small in apes and sacrum in apes is narrow and long, usually incorporating six or more sacral vertebral bodies. Now let us summarize this module. The comparative osteology of primates has interested researchers for centuries. 
The first major branch of the order primates is into the two suborders, that is, the Brosimi and the Anthropoidae. Now, there is almost as much skeletal diversity among the extant calicos, lemurs, and lorises, which are the modern members of the suborder Stripsirrhini. The small number of species of Tarsiform group found in the islands of, of Southeast Asia is unique among primates in several features. The other groups that differentiate from each other osteologically are anthropoid, platyrines, and catarines. One obvious feature often used to define hominoid group is the lack of an external tail. All the primates have Diphyodonty, that is, they have two sets of teeth, and heterodonty, that is, they have different kinds of teeth and distinctive pelvis. That's all for this module. Thank you so much for listening.